Hello everyone, I'm Saket Bansar and today I have Peter Stevens with me. He's a certified Scrum trainer and he's working on a framework called Personal Agility. He, he will speak in our upcoming regional Scrum gathering in Hyderabad. Now before we talk about his, his passion called Personal Agility as well as about his keynote speak, why don't Peter you introduce yourself? Let us know about you first. Okay, sure. Um, first of all, I'd like to say I'm really looking forward to coming back to India. Uh, every trip to India has been really uh, interesting and I've, I've learned a huge amount and, and had um, just great experiences there. Um, I started out life as a software developer uh, for this little company called Microsoft. You might have heard about them. Um, back when I was there, when I started, we were 150 people. We were about 1,000 when I left. And um, I went there, uh, I was really quite burned out after three years at Microsoft, and so I, I went back to Europe, I, I went to Europe on vacation and kind of got stuck. And um, it was interesting, because I didn't, I was so overworked for my days, um, you know, as a software developer, I didn't really come out of it until I did my first Agile project, which was about seven or eight years later in 1993. And I didn't really realize that I was doing an Agile project until much after that, around 2005 or 2006, when I first discovered what Scrum is. Uh, but once I realized what Scrum was, you know, then for me, you know, agility was something that just made so much sense, and I've been doing it ever since. And so I, I did my first uh, Scrum project where I knew the name Scrum in 2006. Uh, we took the worst project in the company and the most frustrated customer in the company and made it into one of the happiest customers in the company uh, and one of the best projects in the company, and that all in the space of about, well, I think we had the turnaround in three months and you know, really established a good way of moving forward after about six to nine months. So it's really quite a dramatic turnaround. Um, and I've been, you know, Scrum and, and later Agility, I didn't really appreciate Agility back then, but I do now. Um, had a couple of aha moments along the way where I really um, appreciate the, the Agile values and principles. And I've been doing that ever since. And I've, I've been a uh, Scrum trainer, independent, more or less independent as a Scrum trainer since 2008. And I've been a certified Scrum trainer since 2012. Good. So uh, let's talk about the personal agility, the topic mm -hmm. of your keynote yeah. as well as topic of your interest. Mm -hmm. Now, before I get into the details of personal agility, see, as a businessman, I want to know what returns I can expect from it. So what result one can expect by using the tools or the whole concept called personal agility? Okay, well, perhaps to answer that, I'll start with my own case. Uh, when I started thinking, you know, thinking about the problem that led to personal agility, I noticed that I was overworked. I was, um, you know, I had too many things to do. I had not enough time to do them. I was managing even my Sundays and Pomodoros of 25 minutes each. And I just realized if, if I want to get better, uh, it's not going to be by having more time. There is no more time to use. Somehow I'm going to have to be better at uh, uh, picking the things I do and choosing how I use my time. And that was kind of a, an aha moment. The problem for me wasn't so much limiting my work in progress. The problem was getting the right things at the top of the backlog and limiting the backlog. Um, you know, to use the, the, the appropriate uh, agile terminology. Um, and these, these reflections led me to ask a series of questions. And the one that, that resonated the most and seemed most essential is what really matters? And how am I doing now? Um, how is that which I'm doing now in sync with what really matters to me? And that proved to be a really useful question. And I started using that, that that question, what really matters, to give me context as I made decisions to do other things. Um, so, you know, in my case, I was able to make some very uh, uh, concrete improvements in my life. One was to, um, uh, you know, uh, one was to work six days a week instead of seven. Now, some people say, wait a minute, wait a minute, should you want to be working five days a week? Well, actually, no, I don't. I'm happy working six days a week, but I really don't want to work seven days a week. And so that, you know, just being able to, um, you know, think about what's what's important to me. And this is kind of how I think about uh, personal agility. It's, it's kind of a, like a GPS navigator for your life. Um, it tells you where you are. It gives you some hints about what you're going, where you're going. And if you like where you're going, that's fine. Um, if you're not happy with where you're going, well, then it can suggest some course corrections. Okay, oh, you need to go a little bit to the left, or a little bit to the right, or up. Oh, there was a turn that we missed. Let's turn around and go back and get that turn. Personal agility gives you the awareness to, to ask and, and answer these questions. And I think that that's really the, 
uh, the key benefit. And, and it, it turns out that, that what really matters is, is a principle that can be an aligning principle in a lot of different contexts, everything from your family to your department to across the whole organization. So what really matters is a very powerful concept. Okay, so what I'm hearing is the personal agility will help us in getting maximum amount, maximum returns from our limited resources. So as an individual, I also yeah. have my own limited resources. My time, yeah. my time is my yeah. resource. So how do I yeah. make maximum out of it? So how do I generate maximum return on investment from my own time? And in order to understand that, I need to figure it out what really I want to do. What is the high return thing? So return is relative. Something somebody will get returns from something else. So I need to understand my returns, and right. by using the personal agility, I can also. Uh, so it gives me a tool to navigate what returns right. I'm getting right now, right. and where right. I am moving towards. If I want to get different returns, different results, what possibly I exactly. need to do? So that gives me a trigger. So am I getting it exactly. right? Yeah. Uh, you sound like you're right on track, and that's exactly what personal agility does. It helps you recognize the track that you're on. And ask yourself the question, is this where I want to go? Uh -huh. If the answer is yes, you're happy. If the answer is no, you can change, um, you know, you can change your course. And of course, there are some people who don't care where they are or where they're going, so they can turn the navy off entirely. You know, but for the rest of us who want to accomplish something in our lives and have a destination or want to have a purpose in life, um, personal agility is, is a you know, super way to do that. So I, I, I take a different route here. So this looks like a, a common sense. Everybody should be doing it. Why is it so difficult? Like I should be using my time well. I should be focusing on what really matters as an individual. Mm -hmm. what, what makes people not to focus on what matters and get distracted? That's, that's a really interesting question. And it's funny because, you know, when we look at, you know, people using agile frameworks and, and people have used agile frameworks, you know, like, like personal scrum or personal Kanban to do things like, you know, organize a wedding, plan their move, you know, people have used agile agility or agile practices, you know, to kind of manage aspects of their life for a very long time. Um, but no one has really asked themselves the question, how could I use agile values and principles to, you know, to organize my life? And um, I'm not going to re reveal any names just yet because, uh, you know, well, it's, it's, it will be time when the time is right. But we've had some very well-known Agile coaches who said, wow, why didn't I think of that? It's so obvious, okay? Because what we've got, you know, if you, look at, um, if you look at the Agile Manifesto, it says, you know, our top priority is to deliver, um, you know, deliver value to our customers in regular intervals. And I'm probably misquoting it slightly, but you get the idea. Well, how does that apply to your own life? And, you know, the answer is at one level it doesn't because, hey, you know, we're not ants, we're not here to produce things for other people with, with our lives. But if we say, well, our highest priority is to do something that matters to us, you know, and have a sense of satisfaction, you know, through what we do. Well, then all of a sudden, you know, the, you know those values and principles and the techniques of the Agile Manifesto really make a lot of sense. And so we say, okay, let's use, instead of using you know, agile techniques to manage the tasks of our life. Let's use it to manage our lives. And, and you know, and, and people get these really great, um, you know, all of a sudden they realize they're on a course, they thought they were going to, you know, a warm, sunny, southern, you know, tropical island. And they actually discovered they're en route to Antarctica. <laughs> and they say, wait a minute, I don't want to go here. I want to go someplace warm. And, and so they, they start making changes in their lives about their health or about their work or about, you know, which jobs they choose or how they do the, you know. And so w once, you, once you understand the problem, it's much easier to find the, find the, uh, the right answer. Yes. And I think that's what personal agility helps you do, you know, understand the problem. Perfect. And do you have some validation of, of this, this navigator? Have you seen somebody using it? And, and providing you the feedback, some success, some failures, and what you have mm -hmm. learned from. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, I mean, I can give you two very concrete examples. Uh, the first one was actually Maria, uh, Maria Mattarelli, my partner on the book on personal agility. And our first conversation, uh, our first in-depth conversation was about, um, uh, was at the Scrum Gathering in Munich, probably about, geez, I, I, I'm afraid that's getting like two and a half years ago now. And I talked to her, you know, I was trying to, I actually, I wanted her to help me with marketing the book. And, and I was, you know, how do I get her to understand what this is about? And so I asked her what really matters and in your life. And she started thinking about it and she started coming up with her list and a couple of things. And, 
Then she said, well, actually, wait a minute. All these things are important. Yes, but, um, you know, I've been neglecting my health. And, you know, that's, that's you know, really taken a toll on me. And so even though, you know, she'd had some very, very successful tours as, as a scrum trainer, you know, it was draining her physically to, um, you know, to the point where she literally couldn't continue. And she says, well, what I need to do is focus on my health and, um, or pay attention to my health. And so she actually started working on it. She'd cut down dramatically on her travel. And so by understanding what really mattered to her, she was able to make important decisions in her life and say, I want to do this and I don't want to do that. And, you know, I've seen this, um, you know, I'm, I'm right now working with, with two, um, um, I will call them executive directors of the companies they work for. Uh, they're both fairly small companies. One is around uh, three or four is in kind of a struggling phase right now. And, you know, he started out when, when he started working together, what he wanted to do was basically, you know, I need to save the company. And so we introduced him to the concept of, of personal agility and the, and the priorities map to manage and triage your work. And what he, um, uh, you know, and he started working towards saving the company. And after about two sprints of this, he realized, you know, yes, I want to save the company, but you know, I've been working 80 hours a week and I want to have a decent life. And so, you know, again, by understanding what was really mat what was really important, what really mattered to him, he was able to start setting limits and say, okay, yes, I'm going to work hard. I'm going to do my best to save the company, but not at the cost of killing myself. And so once again, you know, he was able to make some decisions about, you know, how to invest his time. And another case, uh, again, an executive director, and his first thought was, well, what do I need this for? Uh, you know, all the, you know, he'd just done an agile transformation in his company and he was very happy with it. He says, well, you know, everything that we do is managed on a board somewhere. So, you know, why do I need this? And then he, you know, kind of chewed on it for a bit. Then he realized, well, you know, there are the projects that the company does but then there were the spaces between the projects. And I do a lot of things that aren't really in a project. And so I need a way to manage my time to manage the spaces between the projects. Um, and he said, you know, his number one priority, um, uh, which is actually now mine, by the way, too, is I want to finish each week with satisfaction and I want to start each week with confidence. Okay. And so he's got this, this, this focus, which among other, among other things, that means he's not going to set out to do too much in the week. You know, he knows that, you know, his time too is limited. Yes, he can delegate a lot of things, but delegation has a cost and not everything can be delegated. So what do we do? Um, you know, we, we prioritize and it gives them a context for prioritizing. And um, I've been working on that. And I don't know, I, I think that that was my aha moment for the, for the month when he told me about that. Uh, finish the week with satisfaction, start the week with confidence. Yeah, nice, thanks. Thank you, thank you for sharing the, the cases where the personal agility got used. So a brief idea about how does it work? I understand it's a very small time to, to, to get all the information, but how it works? Okay, well, <clears throat> I, I think, you know, to understand personal agility, um, you know, what, what inspired me was one of the core principles of Scrum, which was inspect and adapt at regular intervals, produce something of value at regular intervals. And so I said, how can I, how can I apply that to my life? And that produced something of value that became do something that matters. Um, and inspect and adapt uh, became a series of questions. Okay, and so at its heart, um, you know, personal agility isn't a framework that you follow. It's, it's a coaching framework for coaching yourself and asking yourself some questions. Um, and so the first of these six questions is what really matters. Uh, and that gives you context for answering the, the remaining questions. Um, now that's a little bit scary because, oh my God, what if I don't know what really matters? Well, the first thing to do is breathe, you know, relax and say, okay, well, let's just ignore that question for a moment. Um, what did I get done last week? Okay, and then you kind of look through, make it, you know, if you haven't been keeping a list before, make a list of the things that you did last week that you care enough about to remember. Um, you know, and then say, uh, what do I want to do or what could I do this week? So what's your to-do list? And you start writing them down. Um, and then what you can do is you can start to look for patterns. Okay, so, you know, the first thing is, what did you spend most of your time on last week? So look at the things and the things that you got done. What did you spend the most time on? That's giving you a hint about what really matters. 
Um, look for themes, you know, so like some things might be about this project or that project, or maybe you did things for your children or for your spouse. Um, maybe you're doing things for yourself, pursuing a hobby. Um, <clears throat> you know, so what you start to do is look for patterns and what really matters. And then when you see the, when you see the patterns and how you spend your time, that's your first iteration on what really matters. Now, it may be that when you look at that, you say, oh, well, you know, I don't see my health on this project or, you know, this, this, this customer, uh, customer X isn't getting the time that he deserves. So it's by recognizing how, how you spend your time with what you think really matters. If they're not in agreement with each other, you can now make adjustments. So you ask yourself the question, uh, what's important? Okay, so you've got this long list of things to do. What are the things that are most important? Okay, the things that are important are things that are going to, you know, help you, you know, uh, they're going to take you to that South Sea Island, whatever, whatever your desired destination is, they're going to get you there. Um, what are the things that are urgent? The things that are urgent are mostly things that you have to do, like you've got to pay your phone bill, otherwise the phone gets turned off. Man, I don't want to do that, but I really do need to keep my phone, you know, so you get, you get things like that. So urgent things are if you don't do them, something bad is going to happen. Important things are if you don't do them, probably nothing bad is going to happen, but they might become urgent later, or there's some benefit or goal that you want to achieve that you're not going to do. Okay, now the problem is urgent stuff screams much louder than the normal stuff. So, you know, when you look at this, okay, here's the things that I could do. The things that I could do, which of them are important, which of them are urgent. And now you say, you know, I've only got so many hours in a week. Which of them do I want to accomplish during the week? Okay, and then these, um, you know, so you basically make a short list. Okay, and of all those, which is the most important? Which one do you want to do first? Which one do you want to do second? Which one do you want to do third? And for those of you who know Scrum, this is kind of like sprint planning. You're saying, this is, you know, this is what I'd like to do. But unlike sprint planning, this isn't making a commitment of what you're going to do. This is more like a ship captain setting a course. Well, I want to turn to a course of 270 degrees due west, and I think that's going to take me to my South Sea Island. Well, that feels like a strange course to get to a South Sea Island, but never mind. Um, <clears throat> this, is, this is where I want to go. Um, you know, and then you can, you know, as you move forward, you know, every week you kind of repeat this process. Every time that you finish something, you put it in the done column. Um, you know, when you finish something, you say, what do I want to do next? Um, you know, look at the top of your this week column, take the next card. So you make it easy to figure out what you want to be working on and what you want to do next. Okay. So the essence of personal agility is these six questions. Uh, we use a thing called the priorities map to visualize your choices. Um, the first three columns are about the triage on what really matters. The rest is kind of like personal Kanban where you say, okay, this is what's waiting. This is what's in progress. This is what's done. We try to focus on the stuff that's in progress and, you know, do one thing at a time, get things really done before you go on to the next thing. Okay. Uh, and that's good for your performance and that's good for achieving your long-term objectives. So what I understand is that, that the framework gives us six questions. It's a coaching right. framework right. and mm -hmm. the, uh, the six questions can be segmented in three categories. One is more about your goal, your visions, what you really want to do. And then mm -hmm. you come up with the second set of questions which helps you to create a backlog for that goal. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and also okay. take care of your current burning needs. So with the goal, you come up with a backlog, and then you have a third segment of the questions, which helps you to get things executed. So you track your daily weekly thing and say, okay, how I am aligning via goal and backlog and my execution, and you get okay. this goal aligned. Am I making sense? Not, Is it uh, you're making sense. I'm not sure I would have grouped them the way that you did, but you know, basically, I agree with you. You know, we've got we've got some questions for deciding what it is that I want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, we got some questions to keep you on track doing the things that you said that you want to do. Mm -hmm. um, one of the questions that we, we call the, um, we call this weekly activity, celebrate and choose. Mm -hmm. okay? And so you celebrate what you got done. Because one of the th interesting things about life is life happens faster than you can plan it. So this is why we don't think of this as a, as a commitment meeting the way sprint planning is. We think of it more as setting a course. Now, what's going to happen is that as you're sailing to, uh, well, I, I usually refer to Jamaica as my destination. Maybe, maybe uh, uh, I don't know, maybe from Bangalore, people hope to set sail to uh, 
um, I don't know, where do people want to go to? What's, what's, what's your, what's your, America, what's your, America, America. we're going to sex, <laughs> let's sail for America, Switzerland. <laughs> um, <laughs> what's your Switzerland? <laughs> what's your America? Okay. You know, and so as you're go as you're going along, um, you know, you want to do things, but life happens and you have to do different things. Okay. And so what we do is, okay, you changed your mind. You did something different than what you originally set out to do but you had reasons for doing that and they were important reasons, okay? So put them in the done column, pat yourself on the back, give yourself a high five, whatever the most appropriate way to celebrate is, you know, and say, hey, look at all the stuff I got done this week. Okay, I wanted to go to America. The course to America is probably to the east from India. Okay, so I wanted to be going to the east, but actually I've deviated to the south because there's a storm blowing and I had to do some stuff that's not really getting to me to America. Okay. Do I still want to go to America? Yes. Okay. Well, that means I need to turn a little bit to the north and get some of those important things done. Otherwise, I'm never going to get to America. Okay. And, and so this is the, the whole concept of the celebrate and choose is on the one hand, you know, to fact, so that you can feel good about yourself. Okay. To empower yourself because you're choosing what you do. And even if you did something different than what you set out to do, you still chose to do it for whatever reasons. And now you can choose to do something a little bit different, which is going to get you back on the course. Um, and that's, that's been, I don't know, hugely helpful to me and a number of people around me. And this is, the, this is actually why we uh, started doing the Recognized uh, Practitioner Program, you know, to start hearing people telling their stories about how personal agility helped them. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's to me, uh, if I use my business entire mind here, it's more like mm -hmm. a mechanism of pivoting. So you look at, okay, am I making sense? Whatever we did, mm -hmm. do, we, do yeah. I need to pivot from my direction because the yeah. market situations yeah. are different or I continue the course and exactly. I, I decide. Yeah. About it. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think yeah. I'm getting some, some idea about personal agility now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So the final question from my side, how can one learn more about it? So I'm, I'm hoping you will speak on personal agility in, in Hyderabad in upcoming regions. Okay. What else one can do to know more and practice personal agility? Okay, well, we've got, we've got a couple of things going. Um, the first thing is um, we have a, um, uh, I'm, well, I'm gonna be speaking at the conference. I'm also gonna be holding a workshop on the conference. I believe that's going to be uh, Wednesday before the conference, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll have a full day workshop. Uh, we have a recognition program. So if you take the class with me and then apply personal agility for a month, uh, you sign up for a coaching call and uh, we validate that you've understood it. We validate that you're really doing it. And then you, you can become a recognized practitioner. You get a nice logo that you can put on your uh, uh, you know, put on your LinkedIn page or something like that. And at this point, we'll probably, I'm not sure if we're still going to be working on the book by the time we have the conference, uh, but if we are, we'll certainly come. And, and um, you know, one of the reasons we, we did the recognition program is we wanted to have people to talk to, to really, you know, document the cases of, of what are people, you know, is it health, is it business, is it, you know, better at the hobbies, achieving long-term educational goals? What are people really getting um, out of personal agility? Um, the, if you want to find out how it works right now, uh, you can go to our website. Um, you can use personalagility.institute. That's not really official yet, but we, we've turned it on even though we haven't done the rebranding. Uh, you could go to the more traditional uh, www.mypersonalagility.org. And from there, you can find our book. You can find the guide. We've got some other tools that you can download um, you know, to, get, to get started. And, you know, really it's, it's, it's surprisingly easy, um, you know, to apply. Uh, the other thing is we have an online course. Uh, Maria Mattarelli is offering an online course. I will probably be doing some online courses between now and then, but I, as, as, as we speak, I don't have them on my website, but go to the personal agility website, and look under slash courses and see what we have uh, as an offering. Okay. So one last thing that we're doing um, is we're setting up a WhatsApp channel so that people can, can share information with each other. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit, I don't know how to join a WhatsApp channel if you don't already know what the phone number is, but I'm sure we can, we can figure that one out and, and give you the information how to join the WhatsApp channel, uh, you know, after this interview. Sure. So uh, we will share these links in our description. So uh, you can mm -hmm. get the, the YouTube description of, of this video. Uh, in mm -hmm. a simple way, one can go to mypersonalagility.org to start with and get the, the material, the guide to get started mm -hmm. with. Uh, mm -hmm. 
join online program or in person program which is going to happen along with the regional scrum gathering in march so yeah come in Hedra, come to the gathering come to the gathering there's going to be lots of great things there there it looks like there there are a couple of submissions around personal agility as well uh, so I, I hope that they get into the conference and that will be that will be great stuff yeah yeah thank you peter this is all i wanted to ask today and uh, thank you for giving your time for for this this interview today Thank you, Saket. The pleasure was mine, and I look forward to seeing you in Hyderabad.